A man who is over from the States, but rather more permanently, is Ronnie James Dio, who uh, I met many years ago when he was a member, with us a member of a band called Elf, right? Exactly right. And then you founded Rainbow with Richie Blackmore back in when? 75? Oh, that was 75. Yes. And now you're singing with uh, Black Sabbath. I saw an interview on MTV saying that you you mentioned that the Black Sabbath, you know, the original Black Sabbath was the main band in heavy metal, and it was the influence in all other heavy metal bands. If you can say something, say anything else about it. Well, only because that's very true. Um, it's so for me to say that uh, I'm in the band Black Sabbath, but I remember when I was in another band, and the band Black Sabbath was Tony, Ian Keeser, and Ozzy and Phil, and I was very influenced by that because it was the most natural music that I had ever heard. It was music that was being made by people who, uh, as I mentioned before, who just make music from their heart and from, from their head. Um, so it was so different for me. Uh, it, it showed me that I could make music too, or that anyone who didn't go to, say, a music school could make music. Uh, that was how important Black Sabbath was. Uh, going back to the message that uh, a friend in the front wrote and talked about. What's your name, Ronald? E. Rock. Okay. <laughs> You got it done. Um, the, uh, the reason that they made the music was not to have a message for anyone. Uh, Geezer has already told you that uh, if there is a message, it was their beliefs. And their beliefs were that uh, uh, we don't think that anyone should do evil things. Uh, they don't think that anyone should uh, make war. Um, they weren't saying that drugs are the answer to life. Uh, they were just saying statements from the heart. And so for me, Black Sabbath will always be that. Uh, the original Black Sabbath did that. They created the idea that you and you and you and you and me and he and all of us could make the same music that comes naturally from the heart. Black Sabbath had reached the top of the mountain in the 1970s. The bad thing about reaching the top is that it is inevitable that you must come down the other side. Black Sabbath would do just that, with singer Ozzy Osbourne being fired in 1979. It wouldn't be long before the band would find their new voice. Ozzy's replacement was former Rainbow singer, Ronnie James Dio. You couldn't get uh, a complete replacement for Ozzy because Ozzy is so unique. And I think the rest of the guys in the band wanted somebody who was mm, a more, let's say, outrageously competent singer, you know, had a bigger range and more power or something like that. And certainly Ronnie Dio is one of the most powerful and um, very gifted rock singers that there is. He did uh, um, Heaven and Hell and everybody went, whoa, what's this? And we were massive, so that was huge. Really? Well, because it started it all over again, you know, it, it, it began a heavy metal trend again. It worked great. I mean, straight away it was like life into the band again by just bringing somebody new in and the, the sparkle was there again and it was really exciting. Everybody was like really ready to go again by whom somebody put something into it. You know. you know, when you're good at what you do, there's always someone out there who wants to do it with you. Mm -hmm. So I was always, you know, fortunate. And at least I'd made my bones in Rainbow as a singer. So when it came time for, you know, Tony to be interested in, you know, me as a singer in, in Sabbath, that he had something really concrete to listen to and go, yeah. The vocal stuff, as he wasn't sort of singing, he was going through that much depression, he just didn't want to sing. So by having all these rips and so much for so long, to have somebody come in and sing to them was great for us and really refreshing. Uh, some of the things we had already written uh, when Ronnie, before Ronnie came, uh, so his involvement was, was good really because he came up with a few other ideas to add to the songs. Ronnie is such an identifiable singer that it's impossible for us, after hearing only Ozzy's voice with Black Sabbath, as thinking of this as Black Sabbath with, with Dio. It's Dio and 
coincidentally, the, the remaining three members of Black Sabbath. All the Aussie lovers, you know, when I joined that band, well, they became Dio haters. You know, I mean, that's just the way it became. I don't think there should have been a replacement for Ozzy. Obviously, in terms of them keeping the band going and making money, it was a good idea. And they sold a lot of records with Dio, but it just wasn't Sabbath. And I kind of see where Tony was going, going to with, with that decision. We want someone in that we can rely on, a professional who's got a great voice and is not going to let us down by getting pissed up, going out on stage and getting his arse out. It worked as a band, but to me that became a different band. You know, that the sound of his voice is so, so different. <laughs> you could also say that he was too good. You know, sometimes you can improve the life out of something. <laughs> now, I think, I think for, the, for the time, sort of 79, 80, 81, Ronnie was the absolute perfect person to have in Black Sabbath. Now, Ronnie James Dio, perhaps on paper, wouldn't have appeared like the ideal choice to front Black Sabbath. He'd um, been sacked from Rainbow um, and was toying around with some other musical things and didn't really know what he was doing. And they got a call and they hooked up. The strange thing is, somebody reminded me recently, the person who suggested Ronnie James Dio to Sabbath was Sharon Osbourne, or Sharon Arden as she was then. Now, whether she meant it as a joke, I don't know. He wasn't the Aussie replacement. He was clearly going to make the band a very, very different band. Of course, the way he'd sing, he's a totally different singer to Aussie, so the way he'd approach things was a lot more operatic, if you like, so it, it helped a lot for us. Suddenly they had a singer who could do things that Aussie couldn't. Suddenly they had a career and a way forward. Suddenly they had a way forward that cut off the past. They weren't putting somebody in to be the new Aussie. They were putting in someone completely different. And history tells us it worked. In many respects, it, it kept a band going that could quite easily have just fallen off the edge of the earth. Uh, you know, it kept them going. It kept the name Black Sabbath alive. So Ronnie Dio, in that respect of keeping Black Sabbath alive, is a very important person. He was a good choice, but he wasn't Ozzy Osbourne. At the height of resurgence of interest in heavy metal with through the new wave of British heavy metal in the UK, and Heaven and Hell comes out and is an instant hit. Heaven and Hell was the record that opened everything up for Sabbath. It really was Black Rainbow in the terms of it's at the very best of Black Sabbath, the very best of Ronnie James Dio era Rainbow, combined them, locked them together and made it identifiable as this band now called Black Sabbath. It had rollicking rolling anthems like Die Young, Neon Nights. It had huge sprawling epics like Heaven and Hell Itself, Children of the Sea. It was a magnificent piece of music. And to my mind, musically the best album Black Sabbath have ever made. This guy, has created a different, slightly different sounding Black Sabbath, but one that's no less appealing. He brought baggage with him, he was a known quantity, but he certainly did manage to add to the Sabbath legend without taking too much away. Ronnie James Dio was a good choice to, re to replace anybody or to be himself, but he sure as hell wasn't Ozzy Osbourne and didn't try to be, and that about him I admire, didn't attempt to be Ozzy Osbourne kept his own personality. He did two albums with Sabbath and I think probably the first one, Heaven and Hell, was a high point, perhaps perhaps the highest point since Master of Reality. I think Heaven and Hell is the best Black Sabbath album. I think it sounds the best, I think the songs are absolutely amazing. Ronnie James Dio is one of the greatest rock singers of all time um, and almost anything he lends his voice to has a very classy sort of sound to it. He clearly had a lot of influence in the band, in the writing, the sound. He transformed Black Sabbath, and, and I think he transformed it from a dying band um, into a quite a vibrant musical entity.
Well, I was, I was still pretty young. You know, it was cool at the time, with heaven and hell and all that stuff, you know, but when I listen to it now, it, it, it doesn't really hold water. Like, I can still listen to Sabbath with Ozzy in it and still just get goosebumps, you know, but the Dio stuff and everything that came after that, just, it just wasn't working for me. It just wasn't Ozzy, man. It, you know, if they were gonna continue on, they shoulda, they shoulda renamed the band something else or something. Black Sabbath without Ozzy isn't Black Sabbath. If that band had formed without it being Black Sabbath before, you know, if this was a new band that had been formed and, and, and those were the people in it, that could, could have been a fantastic band. But because they had, had the history and the fans always compare what's gone before and uh, didn't work for me. I think only a singer of his caliber could have carried it off. The fans did accept it eventually and they did go to see the band. I mean, often Black Sabbath would have replacements later, which didn't work so well. But in this case, um, I think people were prepared to forgive and forget and listen, at least give them a try. I remember going to see uh, the, the Heaven and Hell tour at Hammersmith and it was very professional. It was very, very professional. But it, no, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm a great believer in a band with the original lineup is the only band that can exist. And although it was slick, it was professional, it sounded great, it looked great, it just wasn't even close. The first kind of taste that many people would have got for Heaven and Hell, Neon Nights, was the first single. As an introduction to the band, I thought it was fantastic because, I mean, it's, it's so dramatic and it moves along at a great rate of knots. Neon Nights was an outstanding track from the first Dio album with Sabbath. Obviously, as an opening track, you have to grab the listener's attention. And I think it did that. Neon Nights was the opening track on Heaven and Hell. Now, the opening track of any album, especially an album as crucial as this one, with the change in lineup that Sabbath had, is vital. It gets people into the album or it doesn't. And as soon as you heard the opening rollicking, galloping chords of Neon Nights, you knew Sabbath were on a winner. It's an anthem. It was funny that it, around the early 80s, or late 70s, early 80s, certainly in Britain and probably most other parts of the world, rock music or quite heavy rock music was quite commercial. I guess it's as commercial as Sabbath uh, get. I don't know what chart placing it got to. I think it did fairly well. You would get it played in discos and on the radio and on TV. It was quite acceptable for what we would call now like a heavy metal band to be in the charts and to be on top of the pops and whatever. They went from being more of a sort of straight ahead metal band to they developed this more kind of like more of a heavy rock sound, very melodic, still very heavy as well um, over the whole album. But Neon Nice is a good example. You know, they, they, they were heavy, but very melodic and evidently it was going to work. Thy Young was a very clever combination of the best of Rainbow and the best of Sabbath. Die Young was a good song, one of the better ones from the Heaven and Hell album and I think it worked because um, it was it was vibrant, it was fast, powerful um, and fantastic vocals from Ronnie James Dio. It's very difficult to pinpoint what would be the greatest song of, of, of that era but that's got to be in there definitely Die Young, fantastic song. If you're talking about a Black Sabbath anthem from the Ronnie Dio era. If you're talking about an anthem from the 1980s, this is it. Now, it was always going to be a problem to follow Heaven and Hell. Very few bands could have done so. And Mob Rules does suffer a little bit by comparison. It's a very good album, but it's not as good as Heaven and Hell. In a way, they made their great statement with Heaven and Hell. The only way was down after that. Although, having said that, Mob Rules itself, which was to feature in the animated movie Heavy Metal, which came out in the early 80s, plus Country Girl, Sign of the Southern Cross, these are very, very good songs. I know that uh, I think Tony's quite proud of that album, but again, it was like, I, I you know, maybe around a friend's, or maybe, maybe even in the offices where I was doing the, the, 
the uh, merchandising for them. You know, someone played it to me and it was like, yeah, okay. Ronnie was great on that. Tony was great on that. Um, but for me, it wasn't a classic. Didn't, didn't really play it that much. You know, um, some albums you get, you just never stop playing them. That wasn't one of them for me. I... Clashes between Iommi and Dio meant that by the time the live Evil album appeared, Dio had left Black Sabbath taking a piece with him. First live album they'd ever done. They recorded it, went into the studio to mix it, and everything went wrong. Main reason being, Ronnie Dio on one hand and Iommi and Butler on the other didn't trust each other. I think, I think we want to leave one apart in the beginning, just because I think we listen to too many people around us. I think individually we perhaps heard people say, he did this, or I did this, or he did this, or he did this, and I think maybe instead of talking to each other about what really happened, we didn't. And perhaps at that time we, we believed it. Uh, we've grown up a lot more since then, not too much, but uh, we've grown up a lot more since then, and uh, I think we were able to realize that, that a lot of the whisperings that were in our ear were things that we shouldn't have listened to. Uh, as far as going back in and mixing the album, I wanted to, but they wouldn't let me. Uh, I really wanted to go back in, but they wouldn't let me. That's not true at all. That's uh, that's something that came from a source that really had nothing to do with us as individuals or as people. It was it was someone whose name we, we don't bother to mention because it's not important. Um, but again, it was a matter of whispering in, in ears, and perhaps Tony and Geezer believed that Vinny and I were doing that, or perhaps Vinny and I might believe that Tony and Geezer were doing exactly the same thing. It's not true. Uh, that's absolutely untrue. So you had the situation where Ronnie was convinced Iommi and Butler were going into the studio and turning down his vocals and turning up the bass and guitar in the mix. So what he started to do when they weren't around was go into the studio and turn up his vocals and turn down the bass and guitar. So you had this crazy situation where Ronnie would go in and instruct the engineer to do one thing, Iommi and Butler would go in at another time and instruct the engineer to do exactly the opposite. And this was confusion and confrontation going on. And it was clear there were major problems going on in the band. And it couldn't go on like that. And the other thing that, that Ozzy did was he was doing an album called Speak of the Devil, which again, I, I designed the cover for that and which was to be a, the perfect Sabbath set and record it and put it out in direct competition with Live Evil. And that's, that's what they did. And I know which one I prefer. Thank you. <laughs> 